Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Let's pray, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Miracles are taking place today, Lord, even as we open our hearts to your truth. Burdens are being lifted off people's shoulders. Yokes are being destroyed. I command your heart to be free right now. Oh, I, I, I see someone, your, your, your heart is beating really fast. Your heart is beating really fast. And, and you're scared you may have a heart attack. Listen to me. The Spirit of the Lord God is resting upon you right now. And I command healing to your heart right now. Be free and be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I speak healing to that kidney right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the cause of that trouble in the kidney, I speak healing to it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I stop the process of death in your life. You shall live, you will not die. Hear me? You shall live. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just lift up your hands and thank the Lord. Bless his name for he has healed you. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we thank you because today you will not hold back anything that is profitable to us. But freely we receive of your word and your truth is being made manifest in our lives. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I began to share something with you yesterday. Listen, we were reading from 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. It says, therefore I exalt first of all, first of all, first of all, praise God, that supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You know, sometimes, I was, I was sharing this with you yesterday. You know, people wonder, does God care? Does God care about who our leader is? Does God care about what's going on in, in our nation? He cares. He cares. He knows perfectly what is going on. Oh, if he knows, why is he not doing anything? Now? Who told you he's not doing anything about it? You see, that's why Jesus himself taught them a parable in Luke chapter 18. And said the reason for the parable is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So faint means to give up. Give up on what? Give up on God. So how does prayer stop you from giving up? I'll tell you. When you pray, you hear the voice of God. If you don't hear the voice of God when you pray, you haven't prayed. It's as simple as that. Because when you pray, you're praying to someone who answers. He is not the kind of God that people serve, that they go and they pour libation and do incantation, and then they walk away and believe that they must have been heard. Come on now. When we pray, we expect results. We expect answers. Now, the first answer we get is not waiting to see the result. of. No, the first answer we get is the wisdom that comes from the Lord to us. I've always said this, whenever you want to pray, the first prayer point that should be in your heart is, Holy Spirit, help me pray. Or how do I pray concerning this issue? That's the first prayer point that must be in your heart. And how do you know the answer has come? When the wisdom of God comes. You know, I've, you know, I've been there you know, several times. Listen, if you, if you don't think that people get results when they pray, there are, oh, there are many that will share their results with you. Many concerning different things. Now, there are some certain things that have happened in our nation. You don't even know how they happened. There were people who did some things that God commanded them to do. And those changes came. So don't think things just happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people. Now, when I mean people, you know, sometimes it's people sacrifice. You know, people sacrifice with their blood. Hear me. Hear me. 
No man's blood is required for anything, for any for God to do anything on the earth. No man's blood is required. The blood of Jesus was enough. It is still enough. Praise God. And this is the truth. This is the truth. But you see, when we don't line up with the thoughts of God, we get lots of casualties in trying to do something we think is right. People die. People are maimed. Their heart was right, yes. But did they have to die? No. Could there have been another way? Yes. Now, this is the reason for prayer. When we pray, sometimes, you know, at times like this, we, you tell bro, brethren, let's pray. It's not, listen, it's not to hold a prayer rally and you pray, 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 pray. After that prayer, what did the Lord say? You don't end the prayer rally until you get a clear direction of what you're supposed to do. Even if what you are supposed to do is to stand still, it must be the word of the Lord. You don't tell the people, now we have finished, let us now stand still and see what God is going to do. No, that's under probability. If you're commanding the people to stand still, you must be sure you have heard from the Lord. You, you know, Moses, for example, you know, we, we got that in stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. But that was not the word of the Lord to the children of Israel. Moses, in his own passion, Go read that scripture. They were by the Red Sea. Everybody was crying to Moses. Moses, you've got to do something. And, and, and Moses didn't know what to do. <laughs> God. He didn't know what to do. They've been there for so long. And Moses stood up and he thought the first thing I need to do is to exhort the people. And that is right. Because you see, you want to pray. You think, you know, that's why sometimes, you see, you, you are faced with a lot of challenges and then you go before the God, oh God, oh God, if, if this thing, if I had known, oh God, why have you abandoned me? And then you're thinking God will hear that cry and respond to you. I'm sorry to inform you. He doesn't hear that kind of prayer. And but the Bible says he will hear the cry. Yes. You know the kind of cry God hears. <laughs> David came back from a battle and realized everything was gone. The enemy invaded their camp, carried their families, carried their children, carried all they had, burnt down everything. And everybody was distressed. And the Bible says it got to the point the people thought of stoning David because everyone was discouraged. But hear me, what did David do first? The Bible said the first thing David did was to encourage himself in the Lord. And when he encouraged himself in the Lord, he began to pray. It was not his prayer that encouraged him. He encouraged him. Now, how did he encourage himself? He got to that point. Okay, so what do I do now? Oh boy, there's nothing to do but to trust in the Lord. All right. Yes. Yes. I've got God to trust him. And he's almighty. He's big. He's, he's, he's all-knowing. He knew these people were going to come. So, so why did they inform me? Oh, I think I've got to find out from him what's going on. And that's how he encouraged himself in the Lord. He got out of that depression. He got out of that distress. And then he said, hey, Lord, so what do we do now? What, what are you commanding us to do now? Should we go after this troop? Are we going to find them? Are we going to overthrow them? Are we going to recover all? Because if we're just going to overthrow them and not recover all, then I need to ask, is it necessary that we go for the battle in the first place? So it doesn't just be a revenge mission that ends, that gains nothing for you. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's, that's where a lot of people are. They want to bring God into their revenge. And they revenge and they gain nothing out of it. And their joy, they yes, have dealt with him. But that's not how God thinks. God is purposeful. So David asked the Lord, should I go against this troop? Will I find them? Will I overcome them? Will I recover? And God says, go. 
you will recover. Oh, that's, that's, that's good. If I'm going to recover all, oh, then I better go. <laughs> you see, but first of all, he encouraged himself. You know? So Moses did the same thing. He encouraged the people. You don't, you, don't, you don't raise a prayer point in the midst of distress. People are distressed around you. Things are happening. And then you go, oh, let us call on the name of the Lord. Let us call on the name of the Lord. Let I tell you, God will not even hear you. You want to pray in that situation? Someone's got to speak faith into those people, first of all. Someone's got to remind those people who God is. Someone's got to tell them, hey, he's done this thing plenty times, praise God. So, so it's nothing for us to ask him for it. And when you get the people to that point, and then you make your request known to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, that's why he says, be anxious for nothing. I remember when all these things were going on. You know, that was on, on, on Tuesday night. Yeah, on Tuesday night. Last week, Tuesday. I went on my knees and I said, Lord, what's going on here? Because I was vexed in my spirit. Watching all those videos and, and, and comments, people. I was vexed in my spirit. And, and I said, Lord, what's going on here? And immediately I heard the word of the Lord. I said, son... The reason Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show you things to come is so that you don't get anxious when the journey begins. I said, okay. I remember what the Lord have told me already concerning our nation, concerning the seasons that we are in. And then the Lord said to me, don't pray to me out of your anxiety, I will not answer you. <sighs> okay, Lord. <laughs> God. Then I began to bless the Lord for everything he has said already. I began to bless him. I began to bless him. See? Because he is not taken by surprise. Oh. So he says we pray for all men. That influence of his spirit will rest upon every man. And, and let me tell you something. When he begins to give you the prayer points to pray. You see, even David, when he encouraged himself in the Lord, it was the Lord that told him what to pray about. Moses, when he encouraged the people, when he said, look guys, stand still. Fear not. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more. Because the Lord will arise. He will fight for you. Now, he was restoring hope and faith in the people's hearts. The moment he finished that, guess what Moses wanted to do? He, he turned to the Lord, and then the Lord spoke to him immediately. He said, don't cry to me now, Moses. Tell, you know, he had told the people, stand still. And see the salvation of God. God said, No, Moses, don't tell the people to stand still. Tell the people to go forward. Forward to where? To the sea. And then, so what do we do when we get to the sea? He said, God said, Divide it. D, what? Yes, divide it. And another thing about the word of the Lord, the moment the word of the Lord comes to you, ability is released inside of you. So when Moses heard the Lord say, Divide the sea, Moses just knew what to do. All of a sudden, he remembered, Hey, Come on, with this rod, I, 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 I blood, turn water to blood. With this rod, I commanded a wind to come on Egypt. With the, oh, come on now, praise <laughs> God. But, but you see, he had to hear God commanding, divide the sea. And he told the people, come on guys, move forward. Now their faith was restored already. So they're all, uh, uh, Moses, we're too tired to move forward. No, they did. And then he got there, he divided the sea. And the people walked on dry ground. Praise God. Now, because someone prayed and God answered. Let me tell you this. If you're not ready to receive an answer from God, there's no point praying in the first place. There's no point gathering people and telling them, let's intercede for our nation. When you're not ready to receive an answer from the Lord. And I'll tell you this. This has nothing to do with God. This has everything to do with you. 
you receiving answer from the Lord has everything to do with you. Now, what do you mean by that? I'll tell you. It has everything to do with the integrity in your heart when you pray. Yeah. The integrity in your heart when you pray. Because sometimes people pray with people because of what they are going through. They say, we just have to pray. That's the only thing we can do. But when there's integrity in your heart towards God, you respond in prayer knowing that God is here and he's got to give us the answer to this situation. And that's when you begin to see results. I'm going to continue on this tomorrow. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Thank you for the peace that we enjoy today. Even as you carry out your work in our nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.